God. Amen. 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 We'll give the Lord a great big hand clap. As we focus on the Lord and put all distractions away. Amen? Amen. As we focus on the Lord and we welcome everybody out on the internet, everybody all over the world to share our Christmas celebration message with us. The best news in the entire universe. The gospel of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, Father, your presence has been so beautiful. You've set the captives free. You've brought the spirit of deliverance to the people that had the garment of, of discouragement and the garment of cast down. You've given them the garment of praise. Father God, the, the adversary that so constantly tries to beset your people in all forms and manners, your glorious spirit has dealt with finality and power in each and every case. Literally casting out devils, breaking yokes, setting captives free. And even in praise and worship, Father, the spirit of deliverance and freedom came upon our hearts. And we thank you for that. Now, Father... I come before you in front of my congregation, in front of my family, in front of the entire body of Christ, inadequate in my flesh, covered with so many natural limitations and inabilities. But this is the time when Jesus Christ is celebrated. His birth is acknowledged. Gratitude is expressed, and then freedom and life is received. Father, I always am so limited in my ability to express the fullness of the magnitude of the gift of Jesus. But I ask you, Holy Spirit, touch me, move through me, speak through me, Give people ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to understand. Let people be born again. Let people be renewed. Let people recommit. Let people respond to the glorious gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I had mentioned that we would have a relatively short service and then our fellowship for Christmas and our time of celebrating the family together as a body of Christ, as a family of Christ. And uh, I had sat down and I said, now be short, be short, be short, be short, keep it short, keep it short. Mm -hmm. And I ended up with more notes than I normally do. So everybody say, talk fast, talk fast, talk fast. <laughs> <laughs> Says I couldn't keep the notes short. Move quickly, move quickly, move quickly. Everybody say amen. 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 Turn with me to your, in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 3. Preaching about Jesus does no good if you don't understand the drastic necessity for his coming to earth. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 3, say amen when you're there. Amen. amen. Look at verse 6. And when the woman, talking about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, She's approached by this snake that talks. This serpent comes into a place where he had no business. Some of you are going to need to write quickly because Revelation is already flowing. The serpent comes to a place where he had no business. He should have never had access. A place of glorious beauty, designed by God, created by God for God's fellowship with his son and his daughter. God still has a place that he desires to meet you. This was the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Perfection, hand-designed and hand-created by God himself. Daily, God would come to the garden in the cool of the afternoon, it says, and he would walk with Adam and Eve and fellowship with them. Look at somebody and say, the whole purpose the whole man was made, man was, was, made. was that God wanted fellowship. 
Creatures of his own level. Amen. You were created in the image expressed likeness of God. Why? So that God could fellowship with you at his level. Amen. God's whole desire wasn't to spend eternity with angels created at a different level. Wasn't to, to be praised by angels alone. You may love your dog. You may love your cat. Some people are so twisted by this generation, they love the creation more than the creator. And they love people or animals more than they love people. Surveys were taken a while back in California. About several thousand people were asked this one question. If your neighbor's house was on fire in the middle of the night and you woke up in time, would you save the neighbor first or the neighbor's dog? 85% of them said the dog. That's how twisted mankind has become without Christ. Come on, brother. I don't care how much you love your dog, it cannot talk to you. Yes, sir. At your level. It can wag its tail. It can express affection. But it cannot express the affection and the fellowship at a human level. God was not satisfied with fellowship with angels. He wanted to create a family that he could expressly spend time with. Why do I have to pray? You missed the whole part of prayer. It's communion. It's time with God. Amen. He wants you Amen. to exist. To be in his presence and talk with him. To love on you. To talk to you. To comfort you. To guide you. To work with you. To help you. As a child. As a person that can express love, affection, intellect, and conversation at God's level. Amen. And that's exactly what took place in the Garden of Eden. A perfect environment. Make notes real quickly. Being at the right place doesn't mean you'll live in victory. Come mm. on. Well, if this would change, if that would change, if my condition would change, if my wife would change. He had he had the showboat wife. She was perfect. Amen. He had the trophy wife. He had the perfect environment. Everything was perfect, and all hell came in and destroyed it all. Your environment's not what defeats you. It's what you allow. Amen. Here he is in the perfect environment with the perfect wife, and hell snuck in on his stomach in the form of a serpent and began to seduce and entice and talk to the woman where it had no place and no right but right was given to it <coughs> Amen. the right was given to it don't talk to things you have no business giving a right to converse to you with Amen. come on don't talk to demons don't talk the thoughts and imaginations, cast them down. Amen. You have no right to converse with you. The fall came from conversation and access that it shouldn't have. Amen. Now this family that God so desperately wanted, that he went from heaven, from his throne, to earth, and walked with them every single day because he wanted to be with them. That was his love. That was, those were his babies. It was all destroyed by access that shouldn't have been, by conversations that should never have been allowed. That brought them to a place where they turned their back on pure love to embrace an imagination. Come on. Hallelujah. Did you hear me? Now hopelessly separated, God had to drive them from his presence where it's exactly where he wanted them. That's why the garden was created. He wants you in his presence. That was his whole goal. You and God. Loving harmony. Loving fellowship. Now sin hopelessly destroyed that. And the God that lovingly made them had to, because of that love, drive them out of his presence. Because absolute pure holiness would, be, would destroy sin if it was allowed to stay in his presence. Come on. They didn't dabble a little bit with failure. They became total.
totally, completely, hopelessly separated from the God that made them and wanted to love them. That was the state of all humanity forever if no action was taken. The first Adam made all sinners. But thank God, Father addressed the serpent here and said, there's a child coming, a son's going to be given to humanity, and he is going to stomp your head in the dirt and reverse this curse that you have started. Amen. In the middle of their sin, God released the answer. Listen to me. In the middle of their transgression, God was moving to get humanity back to Him. Amen. Well, I've sinned. God's moving. I failed. God's moving. I've completely, totally destroyed everything. God's moving. Hallelujah, man. Amen. When you can't see, when you don't feel, when you don't know, God's moving. Hallelujah. Yes. Did you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Amen. You know, I was preaching in Norway, and I thought there was a bunch of unsanctified Christians. I thought, God, oh, what a bunch of filthy mouth people. Until somebody finally explained to me, well, that's the name for that. I go, oh, my God, really? Yes. Right here, God said, from this day forward, Satan, you're going to crawl in the dust and the dirt of the earth. You're going to eat dirt. This may sound crude, but you know what the Norwegian word for dirt is? Shit. They go, boy, you got some shit on your leg. They meant dust from getting out of the car. Dude, work on your sanctification, for God's sake. That's the name for dirt, Nor Norwegian. Shit. So from this day forward, Satan, you're going to eat shit the rest of your life. Hallelujah. Praise Boy, I like God. That. Hallelujah. Amen. I like that. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That will sound too sanctified, but I got, that's power in Norwegian. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Now look at Isaiah chapter 7. Well, you better edit it. You better, you better edit that out of your video. No, I ain't editing that out of the video. Amen. That's exactly what he needs to eat. Amen. No matter what language you want, want to use. Come on, brother. Amen. Do you have to leave? Did you get cold? Or just schedule? Amen. Turn to Isaiah chapter 7. Brother. Amen. Grab Amen. some food on your way out. Amen. Isaiah chapter 7. Everybody say, we love you. We love I you. Love you. Hallelujah. Grab your, grab your gifts. We'll take care of that next week. <coughs> For the camera, Pastor Tony and Pastor Teresa have to leave. He's, he, he's scheduled to work. For law enforcement and emergency responders and stuff, they don't get the luxury. They give us the luxury of being Amen. able to be safe. Amen. And be able to enjoy the goodness of God without being molested. We have to sacrifice for us. And we thank God for that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 7. Are you there? Yes. Amen. I'd like for you to look with me at verse 14. If you don't know that the prophet Isaiah is called the Messianic prophet. He prophesied more about the Messiah than any other prophet. He was quoted by Jesus than more than any other prophet. Study it out. The Messianic, the, the prophet of the Messiah. This prophet spoke more about Jesus than any other prophet documented in the Bible. Amen. And he was quoted more by Jesus than any other prophet. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. God promised a son would be born, a child would be given, that would reverse the curse of an incorrectable sin. And separation from God. Amen? Amen. So you got to understand that we are hopeless without Christ. Amen. There's nothing you can do and nothing you can work up and nothing you can perform that would ever get us remedied from our separation from God. 
You are undone and without hope, without Christ. And God knew it. It was part of his plan. Here the prophet Isaiah is prophesying. Therefore the Lord himself will give to you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That means God with us. You know, I've been preaching 35 years, folks. I still don't get it. It still overwhelms me to comprehend that the creator of all, the one that formed me in my mother's womb, would move from heaven and come to earth for me. I don't understand that. I can't understand how my creator would care about me so much. He would personally visit me. That's love beyond my comprehension. Why bother with a sinner like T.C. Hudgens? Why would you get off your throne and move an inch for me? But his son was me. <clears throat> and his name was Emmanuel, which means God is now back with us and among us. God moved to reverse the curse that we could not reverse ourselves and close the separation that was created by sin so that once more we can become sons and daughters of God and live in communion as a glorious garden of beauty and fellowship. Amen? Amen. Amen. And if you're not expressing that in your life with Christ, you don't understand the fullness of God's love yet. Amen. 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 Now look over at Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Oh, hallelujah. First of all. I want you to look with me at verse 6. For unto us a child is born. That's exactly what Father God said to the serpent. Unto us a son was given. What was God's answer to our eternal separation from him? A son was given. Hallelujah. God gave God to us. Hallelujah. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice, from henceforth, even forever, the zeal, the heart cry, the earnestness of God will perform this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man didn't do it. Your works didn't do it. Your change of heart didn't do it. God's performed this. Hallelujah. This is God's plan. God's zeal. God's zeal for you. God's love for you. God's desire for you performed this. Amen? Amen. Matthew chapter 2. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. What is Christmas all about, church? Christmas is God's unveiled love for humanity. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is the son that was given Hallelujah. by God because of the zeal of God's love for fallen, sin so suffering humanity. Hallelujah. He zealously desires us back Hallelujah. in the middle of your failures, faults, falls, and sins. Hallelujah. God's zeal gave us a son. God's zealous love performed a gift that will change everything Amen. forever. To never be the same again. Sin was being removed of its power by the gift of God's love and Son, 
in you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 2. Now Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. You know, it sounds very cliché. And you hear it every single Christmas, but it really is the God's honest truth. Wise people still seek Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. It's only the fools that are bound in their understanding that are indifferent to God. In their wisdom, they become fools and deny Christ. True wise people, no matter how uneducated they are, according to foolish man's standards, true wisdom out of hungry hearts, wise men and women still are seeking Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 These wise men were seeking him out. Why? Because they saw a star. Nature testifies that God's alive and there's a Christ coming. Hallelujah. Anybody with real wisdom will be driven by natural understanding that there's someone I must find. There's somebody that could change all this in my life. And if you have any wisdom at all, you start a journey seeking for the bright and morning star, the Lord Jesus Christ. You may start with Buddha. You may start with Muhammad. You may start with Zoaster. You may start with Islam. But if you're actually seeking the truth with wisdom, driving a hunger in your heart, it will bring you to Christ. Amen. It will bring you to the Son of Almighty God. All truly wise seekers end up Christians. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't ever let anybody debate or argue that out of your heart. Real wisdom is knowing Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. And when they, verse 4, when they had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes, let's get down for time's sake to verse 9. When they heard the king, uh, the king threatened them, said, well, actually what he said, he said, I want to worship him too, find him. But the Holy Ghost was smarter than the king. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. Somebody say, God's always on the move. Until it came and stood where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and what? Worshipped. Worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and Myrrh. Hallelujah. Praise God. What do wise people do? They find Jesus. And what do they do when they find Jesus? They immediately begin a relationship of worship and giving. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. When you know Jesus, you'll be a worshiper. When you know Jesus, you'll be a giver. When you know Jesus, the first expression of knowing him is and finding him is the want to give back to him. Amen. Amen. And then that brings me to the most critical part of all Christmas messages. This is where I always fall short. This is where I always get nervous. This is where I always feel inferior, flawed, and unable to articulate the goodness of God. How many of you are married? How many of you got a boyfriend or girlfriend? How many of you every year go through... You may not, I do. I always come to a dead end, an inadequacy, a, a lack of perce perceiving. I can never figure out what to get Darlene. <laughs> what do I give her? I think of that, it seems inadequate. I think of that, it seems inadequate. I think of this, it doesn't seem... What do you give God? What can I give... To the master that made me. Well, here, I'm giving you some gold. He made it. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm giving you a car. He made the metal. Here, I'm bringing you some cows. He made them. 
It's like, it's like finally, the same thing with my wife. Darlene goes and buys herself something and puts my name on it. So I can say I gave it to her. Because she knows what she wants. But then when she buys something, who supplied it? <laughs> she takes my money, buys herself a gift, and says I gave it to her. Praise so when God. we bring something to God, who supplied it? God did. It's completely inadequate. The only thing we can truly give Him is what? Praise and worship and thanksgiving. And then even when you do out of a grateful heart, it's so inadequate. Holy are you, Lord. Glorious are you, Lord. Powerful are you, Lord. It, it's not enough. Patient and kind and loving are you. That's not enough. Glorious and, and forever and ever. Because you're, that's not, if you had a thousand languages, it would not be worth the worthy praise that he deserves. Amen. His gift was Jesus, eternal life Amen. for eternal death. Righteousness Amen. for unrighteousness. Life for death. Heaven for hell. Amen. What can I give back to Him <laughs> that He didn't make, that He didn't create, that the, the source wasn't Him? Worship and praise. Amen. Out of a heart of gratitude, and love, and honor, and respect. And even that's not enough for what He gave me first, the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of you know the time I was caught up in the heaven and I'm standing next to Jesus and I started instantly praising out of my spirit. And it's the only expression I knew is that it came out of every fiber of my being. And I could not praise Him enough or loud enough or with enough volume that He was worthy of. What can I give Jesus? You know what? I met Darlene. This is kind of like opening up my closet day. I met her after I was flat on my back and her God is just picking me back up and restoring me. I said, I don't have any money. I don't have a career. I don't even have a ministry right now. The only thing I can give you, Darlene, is my heart. Let you have 100% of it, without reserve, without reservation, and forever. And she said, "That's all. I'll take it. That's all I want. Bottom line is all God wants is your heart. Hallelujah. There's nothing you can give him. Praise God. There's nothing you can say enough. There's nothing you can express enough. There's nothing certainly you can do that he didn't supply first. All he wants is 100% of your heart. What can I give God for Christmas? What can I give back to Jesus? My heart. There's nothing that he isn't the source of that you possibly bring to him. The only thing that you can individually give back to Jesus at Christmas, which is his birthday, is your heart. And your words can't express it enough. So how do I express Jesus? My heart is yours. By placing my life in your <coughs> I am as limited and flawed and imperfect as I am I'm yours Lord I give you me for you giving me you God's present to us was Jesus our present to him is us a surrender wholly given over <coughs> praise, worship, and thanksgiving. And when I'm giving in my heart, and 
as we rededicate our hearts back to him today. It's us wrapping ourselves up and saying, Lord, this is all I have to bless you with. But it's all of me. Just as sure as I stood in front of Darlene and said, I don't have anything but me. But I'm all yours. All you have to give God is you. Will it be all of you today? What will you put in a package and present to Jesus today as his gift on his birthday? The only thing that you can originate from your side is you. Because everything else originated with him. How many of us would say the Father I want to bless you with me, but not part of me, not some of me, but my whole heart. Mm -hmm. Take it. Take me. I present me to you. The only gift I can truly give you is a life in your hands. This God bless. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I could cover many, many, many more scriptures, but I believe the Holy Spirit has gotten across to us what he wanted to say. The reason for this season is the gift of God for our sins, the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason for this season is our gift back to God, his lordship over our lives. How many in this church, how many out on the internet would say, I want, to, <coughs> I want to give that gift to Jesus today? We can't give him gold. We can't give him silver. We can't praise him enough. We can't worship him enough. But I can give him a surrendered, broken and contrite spirit, surrendered into his hands life. I can give him all of me without any more reservation, with no more holding back, with no more limitations. I can put me in the package of surrender and give it to him in a worshiping heart of thanksgiving. How many of us today would raise our hands and say, I want to fully surrender to Christ like never before? I want to give my life 100% as a gift to him that I'll never take back. Raise your hands. Uh, out there on the internet, if that's you, raise your hands with us as we come before the Lord. This is Christmas. The reason for the season is God's gift to us. Lost, sinful, suffering, separated humanity. That now in Christ we can be born again and become the righteousness of God. And have that Edomic fellowship face to face with our Father in heaven. Our only gift we can bring to Jesus for his birthday is two things. A surrendered life in all of my heart and what I do to others. For what I've done to others, we have truly done to him. So as we give gifts to one another... We're giving gifts to Jesus if we do it in the spirit and not in covetousness. If we do it out of love for the body of Christ, we're doing it under Jesus. If we do it separated from the carnality of the world and in a heart of thanksgiving, we are blessing Jesus with gifts. But before that can even be accepted, greatest gift back to Jesus is the life he purchased. He paid for. He made new. If you're out there and you've never been born again, it's time to give your heart to Jesus Christ and make him your Lord and Savior. If this is the year, this is the season that we celebrate God came to us, rescued us, and gave us new life. Hold all the packages. Everybody sit still. 
for everybody on the internet and everybody in this place with our hands raised. Pray with me. Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. Father, all I have to give, all I have to give, all I can offer to you, all I can offer to you is me. Is me. My heart. My heart. Right now. Right now. And right here. Oh, right here. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. I give you. I give you. A new. A new. My heart. My heart. All of me. All of me. With no reservations. With no reservations. With no hesitation. No hesitation. All that I am. All that I am. I give to you. I give to you. This life. This life. I give to you. I give to you. Be honored. Be honored. And be blessed. And be blessed. By the only thing I have to give you. By the only my thing heart. I give to you. My heart. In my life. In my life. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I'm in your hands. I'm in your hands. I'm all yours. I'm all yours. Make me a gift to you. Make me a gift to you. And to your kingdom. And to your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God.